Hi everybody, Alex Lamont here, and welcome back to another video. This week's video is going to be pretty different than what I normally do on this channel, obviously, because this is the second time you're seeing my face and hearing my voice, but a lot of you have been requesting from me to just sit down and record a video with some composition tips, or like a composing 101 style video, which I'm flattered. Like. I'm not really good at giving tips, but I will definitely try my best, especially for you guys. Um, keep in mind, I am not a professional composer, I'm not a music theory expert in the field or anything. This is just a video like a friend to a friend style video, just with some tips that help me compose. Take them as you will, I don't care, but maybe they'll help you. So. We're gonna start off today's video with how to begin a piece. Beginning a piece, in my opinion, is the hardest part when composing. Just sitting down at the computer, frustrated with a blank score, not knowing where you wanna go with the piece. And I definitely feel that it is really hard for me personally. But once I get going and I have that beginning down, it becomes a lot easier. So when starting off with a piece, the very first thing that I like to think of is what kind of imagery do I wanna spark with this piece? Or what kind of mood do I want to portray within this piece? Piece. So do I want to write something more uplifting, something motivational, something sad, something frustrated? What kind of mood do I want to portray, as I said, with this piece? And you have a lot of free reign here. And you can really choose anything that you want. You can combine some of these if you want. You can express all of these in your piece if you want. But what do you want to start with? What do you want the audience to first hear when you're composing your piece? Once you have a mood settled, the second part would be what kind of instrumentation do you want? Because obviously someone's got to play your piece unless it's... What's that piece called by John Cage? It's like just sitting at a piano. Anyways. What kind of instrumentation do we want for this piece? Um, you could do strings, you could do woodwinds, you could do full orchestra, piano, choir. Personally, I would just do what you're most comfortable with, but feel free to go outside the box, go out of your comfort zone a little bit. Nothing wrong with that, I'm trying to do it myself. So once you have your instrumentation down, the final step would be what kind of style of piece do we want? Do we want a waltz? Do we want a pavan? Do we want a march? Do we want a hoedown? Like, what kind of piece do we want? This is important because we need to consider the key and time signature as well as the rhythms that you want to use within your piece. Because if you want to do a waltz, it's important to do that it's in 3-4 because that's what a waltz is. A march is generally in duple time, so 2-4 or 4-4. This is me trying to express my minimal music theory knowledge, so bear with me. But those are the three most important parts to starting a piece. So for example, let's say I'm sitting down at the computer and I'm like, okay, I want to write something Western. I want to write something fiddle-like. So I'm going to write a hoedown. That's what I'm going to write. I want it to be in G major because the strings are best resonant with G major. I want it to be in 4-4. I want it to be for full string orchestra, banjo, drums, and tenor voice. I don't know. That's just what I'm going to do. So once you have that solid foundation for writing a piece, you are good to go for starting. The second part of this video is going to be how to write a multi-movement work. So you'll notice a lot on my channel that I like to write suites or multi-movement works, like my last piece which was my Serenade for Strings. Now multi-movement works can have so much imagination and so much freedom because you can write as many movements as you want. You can write three, you can write seven, you could write 902. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but you could. A lot of suites can be taken like with a grain of salt, so really there's not a definite number of movements you need to write when writing a multi-movement work. However, the most common I've seen is four, which nothing wrong with that. If you want to write four movements, go for it. And today I'm going to be breaking down the four different types of movements. I have them written down here just so I don't forget, so bear with me. But each movement should have some sort of uniqueness to it or some sort of diversity to it. If you wrote an entire seven movement work, which each movement being in F major and 4-4 and the same rhythms, well, I don't know, it might get kind of boring. No offense, like that's just my opinion. So that's why I feel like each movement should be its own unique thing because I would love to identify a movement from a suite and be like, oh right, that's the pavan, that's the waltz. I don't know, I keep using those as examples. I have preferred that each movement is different. Me personally, do what you want. The typical 
like form for multi-movement work for four movements, the first movement would be an attention grabber or an introduction. So a prelude would be a perfect example of this. I'm gonna just use my suite of dances as an example. The prelude is a great introduction to the piece. It's something uplifting like the rest of the piece. It's an introduction, it grabs your attention and you could really do anything you want for an introduction. It doesn't have to be fast or anything. It could be slow. Uh, what is it? Peer Gint Sweet by Grieg. That's a slow beginning. The second movement, usually is really slow or really lyrical. It's usually the opposite of the first movement. So my Cerebon from the Suite of Dances, it's slower, it's more introspective. It's just the opposite of the first movement. So like I said, incorporating that diversity is important. The third movement usually is a dance or it's usually something different than the rest of the suite because you want that diversity to continue. So take the third movement, the mazurka from my suite of dances. It's a combination of both. It's a dance, it's a mazurka, but it's also the only movement in the entire suite that's in minor. So again, providing that contrast throughout the entire suite so it all complements each other. The final part should be a finale. This is where I'm a little bit biased by saying it should be fast. It should be exciting. It should be a grand finale to your great work that you just composed while still having that diversity, if you will. So the Tarantella, it's uplifting. It has a tambourine, so a nice surprise to the finale. It's just a great way to end your movement. This is just for the four movements. Like I said, you can do as many as you want, but just try keeping in mind that diversity is important when writing your piece, just so it's unique it's fresh, it doesn't get too stagnant after a while. Now the final part of this video is some of the questions that I've been getting from you guys just regarding composition. Some of the questions I received. The first one is, what program do I use to compose? I use Sibelius, specifically Sibelius Ultimate, which is the version with the most features, and I personally love it. I did have to pay money for it, but it was definitely worth it. I also use the audio, I think it's an audio file, it's called No Performer 4, to make my pieces sound, you know, not like mini. You can use whatever you want. It's totally fine. That was just my experience. So uh, yeah, I use Sibelius. The second question I received is what should I begin writing for instrumentation-wise? The easy way to say this is just whatever you're comfortable with. So let's say it's your first piece, your opus one. I would start with whatever instrument you play. So if you're a cellist, maybe write a piece for solo cello or maybe cello duet. So just keeping it simple, just keeping it familiar. So if you play the bassoon, Write a piece for a bassoon. If you play percussion, write something for percussion, like marimba. Yeah, just stay within your comfort zone, grow as you want, but feel free to throw some challenges in there, but nothing that'll make you frustrated. The third question I get is, what free composition programs do you recommend? So there are a few that I would recommend. I first started off using No Flight which is a great program. It's perfect for beginners. You can write your scores. It's a free website. All you have to do is sign up and you can write your music. You can also use MuseScore, which is what I used after NoteFlight. I wanted to graduate onto something different. So MuseScore is a great second step, in my opinion, for having more options. Once you get more familiar with composition, it's also free. You just have to download it onto your computer or device. And the best part about this is you can share your works with pretty much anybody on the website. So so if you're not worried about copyright, you can just like share it with other people or you can use it for arranging and stuff. And then the last one I would recommend is Flat.io. Flat.io is what my class uses right now in music theory. It, again, it's perfect like note flight just for beginning composition. It's a great tool for just starting out, getting familiar with time signatures, key signatures, instruments, etc. So those are the three I'd recommend. No Flight, New Score, and Flat.io. And with that being said, I think that is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching if you've made it this far. I hope some of my tips really helped you or maybe helped you get inspired to write your own music. And like I said, take them with a grain of salt. This is just me sitting on my bed giving you some tips in front of an iPad on a music stand with a ring light. So uh, with that being said, thank you guys so much and make sure to comment, like, subscribe, do all the typical YouTuber things down below. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye guys, I'll see you later.